Hi everyone, this is Monica with hashtag goals English. In this lesson, we're going to look at primary colors. So that would be blue, red, and yellow. We're going to go beyond the basic pronunciation and talk about related colors, different shades, and then also idioms that use those colors in the idiom or phrase. So even if you're an advanced English speaker, you might get something out of this as well. So let's first start with blue. So we have that oo like in moon. It's just like a long u, u without the y. Oo, u. It's sometimes called the long double o as well, like in moon. So any of these shades we can call blue, but we can also distinguish shades, right? Light blue or baby blue versus dark blue or navy blue. Navy blue we most often use to talk about clothing. So I have navy blue, blue pants. I have a navy blue suit. You can also add this ish to mean that it's kind of blue or it's somewhat blue. Blueish. Blueish. So we have that bluish. Bluish. So the light behind me has a bluish hue. We can use hue to refer to lighting. There's a bluish hue behind me. Let's look at idioms with blue, feeling blue. So blue here is used to mean sad, depressed, down. There's lots of songs that use blue in this sense, uh, especially country songs, blues songs, right? You're feeling blue, you're feeling down. There's also something called blue humor. This isn't as commonly used, but it refers to comedy that is a little bit dirty or crude or inappropriate. So it's a type of comedy that isn't for everyone. Um, it might offend some people. Out of the blue. Here, blue refers to the sky, but this idiom as a whole means came out of nowhere. You weren't expecting it. So for example, she called me out of the blue. I hadn't heard from her in three years blue blood. So notice blue blood, the double O in blood is actually pronounced with a short U, just like cup, blood, uh, uh, blood. So it's not a blued, right? Blue blood. So if you're blue blooded or you have blue blood, it refers to being from a noble or wealthy family. I don't have it on this list, but blue can also refer to cops. So the Thin blue line, blue lives matter. All these phrases, we're hearing it a lot right now in the news. Blue could refer to police officers. But blue blood refers to a noble or wealthy family. Black and blue refers to bruises. Usually if you hear these together in reference to some part of the body, right? My arm was all black and blue, meaning it has bruises. So if you get hit or you fall down and it starts to change color, even if it's, uh, sometimes my bruises are actually yellow, but even if it's a different color, we generally just say black and blue. Yeah, I fell off my bike yesterday and now my leg is all black and blue. Last one, blue in the face. So this refers to running out of breath and it's often used in the context of, you can talk until you're blue in the face, but I'm not gonna change my mind. Something like that, right? So when you say talk until you're blue in the face, or ask until you're blue in the face. What that refers to is if you run out of breath, you turn blue. So it's like, I don't care if you stop breathing because you're trying so hard, I'm not gonna listen to you. Okay, so red, we have a r, r, e, d, short e, 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 red. So we don't want an a, a, like rad. Oh, that's so rad. No, e, red. And we don't really have, we don't generally say light red because when we go light red, we're going into pink territory. So light red things start to look kind of pink or pinkish, right? But we do have dark red and what we refer to as brick red. So that kind of deep red, almost more of a brownish red could be a brick red. We also have reddish, right? Not to be confused with the vegetable radish with an A, radish. No, reddish would refer to slightly red colors, right? Okay, so idioms with red. You might hear on red alert. So if there's kind of green is good, 
yellow is be careful, red is the highest threat level. Um, but this isn't just used in technical terms. Like it could be used to mean you're very afraid, like, oh, I'm on red alert after my house got robbed, right? So it could mean you're, you're feeling very threatened and you're very alert, you're very careful or watchful. Red tape. So red tape, we often hear the phrase, I had to cut through a lot of red tape. It's referring to too much bureaucracy. So bureaucracy meaning there's too many rules, too much paperwork. So cut through red tape is a reference to getting past the bureaucracy if you cut through the red tape. Catch someone red-handed or in the past tense, caught. For example, he was caught red-handed. She was caught red-handed. Can mean they're caught in the middle of a crime. And it doesn't have to be so extreme. It can be like something funny, like a kid's in the cookie jar and they're not supposed to have cookies. You might say, ha, I caught you red-handed, right? You caught them in the middle of doing something they weren't supposed to be doing or later with something very obvious. So in, for example, maybe the child already ate the cookie, but they had chocolate on their face. I caught you red handed. Red meat. I actually looked this one up because I was a little confused on this myself. So red meat refers to meat from mammals. So mammals would be cows, right? Uh, sheep, deer. Now I was a little confused on pork and there seems to be some argument where some like culinary cooks, right? Don't consider pork a red meat because it's actually more white when before it's cooked. Um, but in general terms, we can assume that if someone says they don't eat red meat, that means they don't eat any mammals. They might eat fish or poultry like chicken or something like that, but they're not gonna eat uh, mammals. Paint the town red. So this means to go out and have fun. Like, let's go out and paint the town red. Um, I didn't know actually more specifically, it used to mean having a wild night and it's from some historical event where, I don't know, some guy went out and actually painted things red and went a little crazy with his friends. So I think it used to mean having a crazy night, but now we don't really only use it in that sense. We can use it to go have fun and not be crazy. All right, so hey, yeah, let's go paint the town red. Last one, so we had blue in the face before. Now this one is red in the face. The red in the face just means you're very angry, right? So some people, when they get very angry, they start to turn red, red in the face. He was screaming until he was red in the face. Or, oh man, when he saw his car got smashed, he was all red in the face. Yellow. So notice in the IPA, the y sound is actually written as a J. And then we have a short E, E, and then L, O, and then long O, O, yellow. So we don't so much have light yellow, dark yellow, because it's already such a light color. So some other words I put on here would be gold, okay? And then for hair, we don't usually say yellow hair unless it's actually like yellow. Um, so for hair, we say blonde. And there's a little debate on if it's spelled with E or without an E. It comes from a French, from the French. So the blonde with no E would be masculine for men. And blonde with an E would be feminine for women. But it's kind of used interchangeably. And then just like with bluish and reddish, we can say something is yellowish. It's a little bit yellow or it's kind of yellow. It has a yellow tint or a yellow hue. So there aren't as many idioms with yellow. So we use yellow to mean cowardly um, or yellow bellied. That's kind of a little old fashioned. I don't know that I've heard anyone in recent times unless it was on a Western film uh, saying yellow bellied. Like, yo, yellow belly, he's yellow. Uh, <laughs> I hear it with a Southern accent when I hear the word yellow. So just to fill in a little bit <laughs> with some phrases with yellow, even though it's not like blue, I only did some of the idioms with blue. There's so many. Um, but so here's a little phrase for you. If it's yellow, let it mellow. Okay, so what this means is um, in some places, sometimes there's a water shortage or people are just trying to conserve water for their own reasons. And this kind of little phrase or rhyme is to say, if there's only pee in the toilet, uh, you know, 
if you only go number one, as people call it, urine, if there's only urine or pee in the toilet, you don't have to flush it. So this is not a common universal American culture thing, but in some places they might ask people to do this if there's a water shortage. Uh, like in California, that happens a lot. Yeah, if it's yellow, let it mellow. Like, let it chill out, let it relax. You don't have to flush it down the toilet, it's fine. Mm. And so we have this word mellow and yellow is used a lot. So we have mellow yellow without a W is a soda brand. Uh, don't ask me what it tastes like because I don't remember. Maybe kind of like Mountain Dew? I don't know. And then there's a song called the Mellow Yellow. So it kind of goes, they call me Mellow Yellow. And it's a 1966 song by Donovan. Um, and the meaning behind it, it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, it's kind of nonsense, but it meant something to him, but it's a little bit inappropriate. So if you're curious about that, you can look that up yourself because he recently gave an interview and said what that means. That's all for this lesson. <laughs> If you think of any idioms with red, yellow, or blue, I would love to hear them in the comments below. Or if you have some in your own language, if you could like roughly translate them, I'd be really curious. Is blue sad in every language? Hmm. Probably not. Be sure to subscribe, hit like if you enjoyed this video, and you can always follow me on Instagram, goals.english, or check out my website. I have all of the lessons from YouTube on there, but I also have written lessons and audio recording lessons on there as well, goalsenglish.com. All right, thanks for watching and keep practicing.